I'm a Satsu 5 and this is just a quick um, explanation on the bottle cut test. Uh, anytime you've seen anybody do a um, cut test on a water bottle, whether it be empty, um, filled with water or some kind of liquid, or if there was more than one of them, one by itself. This is just a quick, um, you know, explanation on that. You know, just some things to look at when you watch those tests, what I look for, um, what I get from um, those cut test and I hope you enjoy. Uh, first of all I'd like to talk about the single um, bottle cut test uh, with any knife you know it could be a fixed blade or folding um, blade. Um, there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, first of all when you're cutting a water bottle um, if the knife sharp it's going to cut it there's no question about it. Uh, what you're really looking for is um, the drag of the knife, the um, grind, and um, you know just how smoothly it cuts. Because there's no doubt in, it, in uh, my mind if you know a sharp knife can cut a bottle. If it's dull, then why do the cut test? Then it's not going to cut. But uh, you know uh, you're looking for the smoothness. Um, you know preferably when I um, do a cut test, I don't want my bottle to fall down. Um, I don't mind if it hops up and lands. But I want um, the top half to be, or the top portion to be cut, and I want um, wattle still in, you know, the bottom portion. So if I cut it directly on this line right here, and it stays up, I want all the wattle in here. I just want the top um, portion of the bottle and all that wattle to fall out, and that's what I'm going for. But that doesn't always happen. So um, what happens um, when uh, you don't get the perfect cut and it just sits there. Um, well, there's other things you might want to look at because a lot of the cutting has to do with the technique of the cuddle. Um, it's not necessarily the knife's fault if the knife um, doesn't cut the bottle and it doesn't stand up straight. You know, it could be several other variables that affect that. You know, I might have my angle of my knife wrong. I'll get a knife out to show you. I might have the angle of my knife wrong uh, and I might accidentally hit it like that or you know whatever I might actually hit the tip of the bottle um, there's a lot of things that can happen so other things you might want to look for is when you do cut and it does knock over um, how far does the bottle sling out does it just move a little bit and then fall over or does it go way across the um, uh, yard or the cutting area. Um, it's just some other things you want to look at. Um, of course you want to look at if you completely sever the um, bottle or not. And if you have a shorter blade knife you might not be able to uh, sever it. But you know what? If you have a shorter blade knife then you should be able to make multiple cuts into a um, bottle. And um, you might be able to make multiple cuts in with the bottle uh, if you do completely sever it, like if you just cut the tip off and the bottom part, you know, you might be able to make a maximum of three cuts is pretty much I've seen on one bottle. And that's because, you know, you just kind of start up here and then you cut right there and there. But, you know, more cuts you get in, the other little it kind of gets, unless you have a really small, sharp knife. Then you can kind of just slash at it and put like maybe uh, five or ten cuts in the one bottle and it's slowly leaking water out. But, um, you want to um, watch one if it just stays. I've seen someone use a. I've seen someone cut a water bottle with a cut test with a um, case side buster, and they cut, and uh, they severed completely through it, and this top half uh, turned over and landed inside the um, bottle. And to me, that was an awesome cut, because not only did the bottom part not move, but the top part pretty much stayed stationary in line with the uh, rest of the bottle. It just kind of flipped over and turned into the um, bottom portion which is very good and um, again if your technique's wrong uh, you might end up slinging the bottle you know across you know the yard or wherever you're cutting um, so you want to if you don't completely sever it you want to see how far it moves and uh, um, you know um, and if you don't and uh, if it just stays you know still perfectly. That's the two things you want to look at. If you're cutting an empty bottle, this is where it kind of gets a little bit um, difficult. 
Um, obviously, you need an extremely sharp knife to cut an empty bottle, and it does not matter what you do. Uh, when you cut an um, empty bottle, it's going to um, go flying someplace. It, I don't know how far it's going to fly. I could, you know, not fly that far, but it is going to fly. You're not going to get it to stay. Um, but basically, what you're testing is the knife's drag through the cutting material. And, um,. If you have good technique, then you can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, a lot of um, swordsmen who practice Japanese um, uh, sword cutting with the tatami mat, um, you know, they can cut several times in a tatami mat without any of the uh, um, portions of the tatami mat falling. You know, they can completely sever it like three or four times without, and it all stay in line, and then they can like brush, knock it off with their hand or whatever. But you're not going to do that with a water bottle. But basically, you know, what you're testing is, one, the sharpness and the smoothness of uh, your knife, uh, how it goes through the material. And obviously, if it's sharp um, and you hit it with any kind of force, it's going to cut the bottle. But if it's extremely sharp and you have, you know, somewhat good technique and you cut an empty water bottle, you'll completely cut it in half, which is very difficult. Not all knives can do that. Pretty much any knife can just cut a water bottle or... If it can't cut it, it's going to poke a hole in it uh, when you sling it across the um, yard or whatever. It's going to knock it somewhere, but it might get like a small fracture in it, which is also something to look for. If you cut it and a lot of water spilling out, you might want to look if there was like a fracture. You know, if you cut with a knife sideways and then there was a kind of a fracture or a cut downhill, then you know that your knife uh, really just kind of blunt trauma. Uh, you had a lot of blunt trauma to the cut and um, it wasn't as smooth as you would have hoped. Now something to uh, consider when you're cutting multiple bottles whether it's mul multiple empty bottles or multiple um, uh, filled bottles is um, one of the tricky things about that is you, you probably get through the first bottle or you can miss the first bottle but you're definitely going to get the second bottle the third bottle or whatever depending on how good you are cutting but usually what we found, the formula for um, cutting empty bottles is however many bottles you have up and you're a good cuddle, you want to cut all of them except for one. And that's the very last one at the edge. And pretend this is a bottle because if you have the bottles set up and you cut this one, it's going to start knocking this one and it's going to have a domino effect. And basically you're trying to beat that domino effect. And it's already had like a head start on you because as soon as you touch this, this one's knocking into the next bottle. And um, so when you do multiple bottle cuts, not only are you uh, looking for that uh, factor of drag or the lack of drag a knife has, um, you're also um, wanting to um, go pretty fast, cut off all the way through as many bottles as you can, hopefully without knocking them over as smoothly as possible. But you also have to... Um, uh, keep in mind how long your blade is because if you just cut like this you're not going to be able to use all of your blade in all of the bottles. You have to really get in there and you have to kind of come on like this and get the most of your um, blade in all the bottles because you know it's a per fairly you know long target. And a lot of people don't realize that um, you know like when we do the 13 bottle cut test what you know, some people say, well, yeah, well, I've seen a, a guy cut, you know, uh, 16 bottles, 20 bottles, 21 bottles. And they say, what's so um, special about this attempt at 13 when you really only several like 12 of them or whatever? What's so cool about that? Well, the cool thing about that is, with the K-Ball, it's kind of the every man's tactile knife. It's like the first high-value tactile knife that anybody can get. And it's still the standard by, by which all tactile um, slash utility knives are kind of measured against. You know, is it as good as a K-Ball or is it worse than a K-Ball? You know, it's just kind of the measuring stick. Um, but really, the K-Ball is not really that special. It's fairly cheap. Um, you know, you can buy them from the factory for like $80. But if you look around, you can find them, you know, like $44. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, maybe like... Twenty nine, thirty dollars, but um, you know, just depending where you shop. But it's a fairly cheap and affordable knife. 
It's not a $300 knife. It's not a custom knife or cleaver that someone made out of some kind of super steel um, with you know some kind of convex or super flat um, grind. You know, it's just a standard cable, and it's able to cut like that. And um, so that was the amazing thing with the cable is that it has the ability to cut almost as good as a you know custom you know um, knife that's cost maybe two uh, sixty and up. Uh, and that's the amazing thing about that particular cut test. Now with um, the gallon jug bottles like milk jugs which are a little bit thinner and um, you know the orange juice jug I prefer using the orange juice jug because it's a thicker plastic and when you have a um, jug like that it's um, you're obviously using something bigger to cut it with but it's also adding a lot more weight to your um, you know cutting uh, material so it's going to be harder to tip over so I like putting it on some kind of narrow um, um, platform like maybe a piece of wood or as you see a lot of times on that stump which is you know kind of unlevel it's not you can't really set something on there and expect it to stay up um, you know normally but I have found a place where I could bounce a milk jug on it and cut through it without knocking it over and um, again when you're like cutting with like the special forces shovel or um, maybe a machete um, or bowie knife you know you're using a big old cutting tool something that's possibly thicker that has um, maybe some kind of unfamiliar um, blade geometry that can affect the way it cuts it might be razor sharp but the blade geometry is um, has a lot to do with it so um, when you're cutting a milk jug just keep in mind it's heavier it's um, harder to knock down uh, knock over with the everyday sharp razor sharp knife but when you're using something like um, that um, shovel or a bowie knife that's really thick or um, you know a machete you know you're, you're passing more uh, a wider blade through there which creates more drag than the uh, normal knife yes but the bigger blades probably moving faster and that might make it a little bit easier to cut but normally the bigger jugs are easier to cut now on the thrust um, empty bottle thrust cut test um, just because your uh, knife can't um, stick an empty bottle and then it just stay, it stays stuck to your blade like some of our other empty bottle cut tests doesn't mean that your knife is a terrible piercing knife it just means it doesn't have the acute point that some other blades have but what you're really testing with that which is probably pretty obvious is when you make the thrust um, you want to uh, see how much penetration you get before the um, bottle stops and is stuck to your blade or it knocks over into the next county and then later when you get it up uh, you can kind of um, get your fingers see how many finger lengths it is or be really careful not to enlarge your hole and just kind of um, put your um, blade in there and as soon as you start feeling a little bit of friction uh, like you're fixing to uh, cut the hole wider you can put your fingers right there and go huh that's how deep the blade is stuck into the empty bottle with nothing holding it up and um, to me that's a pretty um, good test to test out um, the thrusting ability of the point and keep in mind you know you might have points that are thickle and they're more for utility or they're made for more utility reasons or for strength reasons so they won't break off not that you should be using your knife as a um, fry ball but just so if, in case you stab something that's hard and it contacts something hard like maybe bone or metal or whatever that it won't break and you still have the functioning knife um, something I want to talk about I think I mentioned this in my uh, cold steel DVD review I'm not a big fan of the um, water bottles being taped together and then having bungee cords on both sides and then strapping it down and then cutting it because really that doesn't show anything if a knife's sharp it can cut a uh, bottle especially if it's fixed you know because it's not going to knock over you know you could probably do that with a um, you know cheap 
I want to say, I don't want to say cheap, cheap, but you know, you could probably do that with an, a frost cutlery knife for, you know, a non-name brand knife for something. And it's true, dull knives might not make it through all of them, but when you have a high quality product uh, with factory edge, that should be no problem to cut a water bottle um, that's strapped to something. And that's why when you see tatami cutting, they have something to hold up the tatami so the wind doesn't blow it over, but it's just a spike about that big. Um, you can still, you know, push the um, tatami mat oval if you wanted to. So you're still testing the sharpness and the blade geometry and the lack of drag of the blade, but um, you're not just fixing it someplace. Um, so that's my opinion on um, bottle cut test. You're looking for the lack of drag, um, the quality quality of the grind, kind of. Um, if you have a knife that, when it's ground up, it um, kind of has a lot of nicks in it, and it's just a very rough feeling blade, that's going to create drag. You know, hollow grind blades, they're going to create more drag uh, once they get to this area right here. Full flat grinds or battle, um, convex edges, and full flat grinds you seem to be the best cuddles for wa water bottles and um, that kind of cutting demonstrations. And um, that's about it. That's just a simple, um, simplified version of what to look for in a bottle cut test because they all just kind of freely, you know, sit in there, especially the empty ones. You know, anything can knock them over. And if you don't have a sharp knife, then you're not, uh, you're probably not going to completely sever it. And if you do, you want to see uh, how much the bottle itself moved. And hopefully it doesn't move very much at all. And that's the same with the thrusting test and em empty versus full or multiple water bottles. You want the bottles to move um, as less as p possible because that just um, shows how much more sharp uh, your knife is and um, the uh, lack of drag your knife has when it goes through any kind of medium. And I'm probably starting to repeat myself, but um, that's about it. Um, that, because that's what you want in a cutting knife that you cut anything with is low drag um, and sharpness. And the e and the easier it cuts through something, you know, you have sharpness and that low drag um, through that material. I'm a Satsu Five. I hope you got something from this. I'm sorry if I kind of repeated myself, but. I uh, get every now and then I get people asking about the cut test, about what does this prove, you know, my um, granddaddy's um, cross cut saw could cut a wa water bottle. Yeah, it probably could, but how far does that water bottle move? You know, how, how much does it move or whatever? So that's really what you're looking for. You're not looking strictly on the fact that um, it made a cut in the bottle, you're not looking strictly at the fact that, um, you know, it's um, still standing or not, not standing. It's a little bit of everything, uh, but you mostly want the cutting material to stand still. And um, if it does not stand still and it just moves, how much did it move? And uh, everybody's going to look at uh, the same cut test and get something different from it. They might say, oh, that's not to my standards. Oh, that's way beyond my standards. And again, since there's a human factor in it, there's always that chance of, you know, them hitting the uh, um, cutting material wrong. So that's something to keep in, in mind. But um, that's just my thoughts on the bottle cut test. I'm Satsu5 and I'm out.